I'm lying to you. Okay. I'm fully so. lying to you. Yeah. It's okay, it's okay. No problem. No problem. <laughs> this is going to This is going to make it to the blue fuzz, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes it's good to treat yourself. Yeah, no, mine is every day. Like if I'm just having a bad yeah. day, it's just going to treat myself. Holy day one time. So bad. Welcome back guys to another show of Soko Simple where we take a deep dive into the world of finance, investment and everything in between. Join us today as we are going to encounter one of the most important topics that we normally analyze from time to time and we are going to talk about the fixed income investments. And I know I've heard you guys kept on saying that there are too many males in this sector, <laughs> there are too many male faces. So today, I brought for you a gorgeous lady with a brilliant mind, Miss Nicole Lagarde. Okay, wow. Yeah, introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, my name is Nicole Lagarde. Um, I am a fixed income operations associate at Standard Investment Bank. Um, and I hope I can help you guys learn a little bit about investing in fixed income. Don't worry, this is super simple. <laughs> we basically put the fund in investments. Mm -hmm. Please explain to us what fixed income investments are. Fixed income is basically a debt instrument um, whereby uh, you, as an investor, uh, loan out your money to a corporate um, or you know the government mm -hmm. and they give you back interest periodically um, until maturity where yeah. you get your uh, principal amount okay yeah so is it normally compounded no okay no so it's a it's set date so for example in kenya we have our uh, if you're doing like bonds treasury bills treasury bonds what happens with the bonds is the government gives you they'll tell you they're giving you an infrastructure bond or a fixed uh, coupon, a fixed coupon bond um for this many years let's say six years mm. and um, you know in May you're receiving um, this amount of money because it's you know it's a percentage so maybe it's a it's a 17 year bond so you know um, on the in May you're going to receive about 8.5 percent um, and then so it's six months six months so um, in November you're receiving another six point and eight point five percent return okay. so that's what usually happens it's fixed income yeah an example would be you mentioned about the t bills yes uh that's treasury bills right treasury bills and then treasury bonds so actually those are two different fixed income products so for treasury bonds is what i've mentioned they pay you periodically um so in kenya it's six months six months um from when they're issued for treasury bills however we call them discounted products so what that means is you give the government so the minimum is a hundred thousand um, to yeah. invest because the the government a hundred thousand they'll give you a rate after you know they've discussed they've met um, they'll give you a rate uh, then they'll tell you um, on the day they've discussed and every all the results are out that yeah. you need to pay maybe let's say ninety seven thousand um, and then if it's a ninety one day T bill you will pay you'll pay the ninety seven after those ninety one days you'll give them back a hundred thousand yeah easy money guys. Why might young investors consider adding bonds or other fixed income securities to their portfolios? Um, so basically, the, 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 the easiest answer would be diversification. Mm -hmm. So you'd always want to diversify your portfolio. Um, because, uh, for example, if you have shares and treasury bonds, um, if you're looking right now the current trends or just how the trend has been, mm -hmm. uh, maybe for the last one year, you'd see um, shares were going down. Yeah. Um, and the tr interest rates, I mean, on the coupon rates on bonds is high at the moment. Like we have an infrastructure bond at around 18.4%. Yeah. So if you look at that, if you have, um, if you only had shares, <laughs> yeah. you would feel like you're in a bad position. But you see, if you hedged it with bonds, yeah. then you don't feel the pinch as much. So okay. there's that, yeah. On a bonds press list, mm -hmm. there's this column which has the yields, mm -hmm. which is in percentage. Yes. Yeah. So could you explain to us what a yield is, what it means? Okay, so yield um, is basically the price that you pay mm -hmm. for the bond. So it's what determines the price of the bond. Yeah. Um, so in a normal, like just a soccer, normal market, yeah, yeah. you go in and uh, maybe, uh, like the floods that we had, yeah, I remember somebody in my, com like my colleague, uh, lost all the beans that they had planted, yeah. yeah. So which means beans generally at that time were not doing well because they were flooded. So when you go to a market, beans, the price is higher. Mm -hmm. um, so 
uh, yield is kind of what determines the price for everyone at that time. Yeah. Um, so because of such, you know, for bonds now it would be economic matters. So like maybe finance bill, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> a very sore subject. <laughs> but finance bill, for example, yes. I'm not saying it had any effect. But for example, if it did have an effect um, mm. in the negative, you would see the yield going up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then if uh, there was good good news or something you'd see the yield going down which means um if the yields go down you pay your price for the bond goes up and vice versa yields are the what determines the price in the market um so when you come to us um as brokers we'll tell you um we'll give you a yield based on what's in the market so nsc you yeah. guys um you provide us with that basis so that maybe we don't overcharge the client or undercharge the, the other client you know um so when yield is is high um, and it's based on economic factors. So when the yield is high um, and higher than the coupon, which is basically your interest, um, you would pay um, you would pay more. You'd pay more for the bond, yeah. Okay. But in the event that you have, uh, like right now, you have the 8.5 year at 18 percent, but it's trading at 17. Um, so the coupon is higher than the interest. You'd actually pay, yeah. You'd pay more, <laughs> and then the, the vice versa. So if the interest rate is higher than the coupon, you pay less. So you pay a discount. So the 17 year that we had in the uh, primary, it was a, there was a top sale, and there was also the previous primary. Um, if it it has a coupon of 14 percent, um, but the rates right now, as I said, are at around 17. Yeah. So that would mean you'd pay a discount. Okay. Yeah, so usually the yield will help you know like um, if you're going to pay more, if you're going to pay less based on the type of uh, bond that you're interested in, if it's a fixed coupon, if it's an infrastructure bond. I mean, most of the time people prefer to pay less. <laughs> you'd, you'd write, Yeah, but at the same time you have to look at the coupon of the bond. So, for example, if you're looking to get way more, um, you would, you'd have to be willing to pay slightly higher. So the 8.5 year is now my basis for that, you okay. know. Yeah. So that's a, currently that's the most latest bond, um, the most current IFB. IFB, right? yeah, it's the yeah. most current IFB, the best one. So you guys should go buy it. Minimum is 100,000 to Ooh. invest. So, <laughs> and you'll get uh, your 18K. <laughs> yeah, 18K, um, no, you'd get 9K. Uh, uh, half yearly, yeah. but then you'd get 18k in a year. I mean, that's money you didn't have. Imagine and that. You know, money. This is possible. <laughs> you make yeah. money in your sleep. Yeah, and you don't have to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's something. <laughs> yeah. How do factors like interest on you've already talked about? But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me just ask. Uh, how do factors like interest rates mm -hmm. and inflation impact fixed income investments? Okay. So with inflation, um, I know not many people know to, uh, you know know what it is but they just know it's bad yeah. <laughs> i'm not going to go into what it is but it's bad <laughs> so um when inflation is high in the economy most of the time you'll see like you're more rigid in terms of spending like your enjoyment um and you know because things become expensive like cost of living is a bit higher and all that um now imagine you are trying to borrow money from me and there's high inflation i am more rigid in terms um and you you're trying to borrow from me yeah? yeah so i am more rigid to give you that money because i'm thinking um with the way things are going <laughs> this economy this economy things yeah. are thick i don't know if you know i really want to do that so your incentive would be to raise um, how much you're gonna pay back? So you you yeah. you you would give me a higher in, like the interest would be higher. I'd charge you a higher interest basis, yeah. yeah? Um, which means so if I was to if if you're talking coupon payments, mm -hmm. yeah. If inflation is high, most of the time you see like the government would you know give you an incentive. So they'll also raise the coupon payments. Mm -hmm. So that's how we ended up like with the 18 percent. At the time we were dealing with um, repaying our our year bond, <laughs> yeah, it was a hard time, and inflation yeah. was high, so we have high interest rate, which means uh, mm. you have a high incentive to give to lend your money. Yeah. So basically, that's what usually happens with inflation. Now, on the downside, however, we do have existing bonds in the market. Um, we have infrastructure bonds that are at about 10 percent, 10.6 percent, um, and you see, we've put in that money for those years. So if it's like 12 years, I've told you, you're getting your 10 percent. At that time, that was a good rate. Yeah. Right now, there's 18 percent, and you don't have that. You know, um, they're not they're not gonna correct that 10 percent to match the inflation right now. 
So there's that um, factor that you need to look at. So if anyone who's holding that 10% bond mm. um, is more likely to, you know, feel like yeah. I need um, just I'm feeling bad. I need to get into the new one. But now, as I said, if interest rates are high, um, if if your yield, because you, you see yield would also move up. Yeah? Yeah. So if yield moves up, that 10% is is gonna be a big loss now because the coupons are 10. That's so you need to look at something like that. So that's how inflation affects um, uh, bonds and interest rates basically in our market. Okay. Yeah. So now Nicole, mm -hmm. Soco Simple is probably brought by, probably sponsored by the NSC Soco Play, yeah. which is a virtual trading platform. Yes. It allows investors or upcoming investors to learn, practice, and learn how to trade. Mm -hmm. What simulated cash? So you have virtual cash, once you just register, you're given virtual money. Uh, what, what am I telling you this? And have you, have you registered? I have. Uh, uh, you're registered. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Clearly, <laughs> I was waiting for you to call me. No, uh, oh, yes, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yes. You see, um, currently, what's at the virtual trading platform is, well, it's only at the first stage is we're only dealing with stocks. Okay. But do you see, would you advise or would you find it more incentive for now when you put now the fixed income investment into the platform? Um, yes, 100%. As I said, diversification is so important, especially in your portfolio. You need to diversify your portfolio just to hedge um, any risk that, uh, you know, the time brings, the economy brings, like... Yeah you know life happens um so i think it's important for people to also get the opportunity to um, learn how to what will happen when they have all of the products in their portfolio or maybe even two or three um you know these derivatives as well yes. um so they can see how to 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 play around with all of the um, investment options they have um also to just understand maybe their it, it, it might also help them understand their risk um, appetite maybe you're risk averse and i'm you know i i, I don't mind <laughs> taking out the risk um so you know i'd i'd do a bit more like you would opt to maybe put more in fixed income because that 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 terms or the yeah they're said to be a bit more risk-free yes. than shares um don't take me to be that serious they you know governments have defaulted companies have gone down but um they're said to be a bit at least uh, risk-free um in comparison so um you would at least opt to have a, a portfolio that's largely based on fixed income me i'm i'm interested in in you know seeing what's out there because yeah. i i'm more uh, risk i'm a more a risk taker so i would maybe do shares and try different things, um, you know, move up and down here and there. So I think it's important for, for all of those options to be available. Um, and then also just for people to understand, like I might have told you um, when the yield is higher than the coupon, um, you know, the, the uh, you know you're making you're making uh, a loss or if the you know your coupon is higher than the you know those such things you don't understand what i'm saying but if you saw it mm -hmm. for yourself or you got to experience it for yourself mm -hmm. it would be easier to understand um if you come to me as a broker you know what you expect you know based on the yield you've seen on nsc based on how the market has been moving because i assume you'd also peg it to the market <laughs> like to how the market is going so people have real-time understanding of what's going on yeah. um so yeah i think it would be really important um for them to get that experience um, also for something like to understand a discounted bond like yeah. what i just said the 17 year mm -hmm. versus you know uh, paying a premium in the secondary market or even in the primary based on a reopening yeah. so such things so all that information will be displayed over there they you should yes hopefully and also just to understand tax because some bonds are taxed yeah. and some are not so oh. you'd also see the return you're making in version two version two report version two yes. not version one okay it's fine <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's okay yeah so, so ladies and gents there you have it You've heard it from the one, the only, Miss Nicole Lagat. Thank you for coming here. Mm -hmm. We usually have a bell over here, but hey guys, we actually need to ring that bell back. But for Was that, I supposed to ring it? <laughs> yeah, imagine Did everyone else ring? That's so unfair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the first girl and you guys don't give me a bell. <laughs> guys, it's his fault. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you, thank you, Nicole, for coming. Thanks for having me. We've come to an end of the show. Yeah.
let's Unfortunately. Let's keep it so simple. Okay, for yes, sure. Yes, too many more. And guys, there's an upcoming investment challenge which is coming up September 9th. Sign up, register to the platform, and stand a chance to win cash prizes.